important to me. Thank you, Roland. Okay, so uh, for those of you who joined us for the first session, uh, assisting me again this evening uh, is Roland Postma. Thanks, Roland, for Roland for helping out today. Um, so the agenda for today uh, really is um, some introductions. I'll introduce myself in a second. Um, we will then be having some reflections from the councillor on the sessions that we've hosted thus far. Uh, in this series of uh, participation sessions. Uh, then I'll be giving you a bit of a refresher on what the integrated development plan is for those of you uh, who might not have joined us before. And then from that, we get into a feedback session around what occurred in our neighborhood sessions that we hosted um, last week um, in various parts of the ward. Uh, then we'll be going to a poll to see what you've priorities are. We'll then chat a little bit through about how it is that you can contribute to the IDP process. We'll chat a little bit about contributions and we'll, we'll you'll see another on-screen poll about that and then we'll have some time for questions and that should take us to 7.30 when we will be wrapping up the session today. So as a reminder, let me get my cursor online there. Um, Please can I invite you, encourage you to use the chat bar for questions or comments. Um, and then what you see here in pink are the places where we'll not be presenting and we'll have a session to um, discuss what it is that we've found and have a chance to have a bit more of engaged discussion. So in terms of the agenda, you can look forward to those uh, three moments. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing there and then go ahead and introduce myself. Um, for those of you who I haven't met in our first session or one of our neighborhood sessions, my name is Kirsten Wilkins. I'm the managing director of Open Streets Cape Town. We are a not-for-profit organization that works to build active citizenry and bring those active citizens together with local government in order to positively transform the cities that we live in. Um, by way of introduction, I, by profession, I am an urban designer and architect. Uh, and also wanted to point out, because we've had this question a few times in person, that our work in this facilitation uh, is a uh, pro bono effort and we don't have any funders for this. So it really is a feel good, do good exercise where we are supporting local councillors to be their very best. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Councillor Mikhail Manuel. Uh, he is going to be introducing himself and also just sharing some reflections on the sessions that we've had in the last week or so discussing the integrated development plan. So uh, Mikhail, I'm gonna hand the mic to you and you have about 10 minutes if you wish to use all of them. Uh, cool, thank you so much, Kirsten. I'm just trying to close this. Okay, it's annoying. Uh, thank you so much, I, I really appreciate that. And uh, thanks to everyone for, for joining this last part uh, of the whole process. Uh, over the course of the three neighborhood sessions, uh, the first one we covered uh, Rosebank and Rondebosch, and then it was Claremont and Newlands, and then Kenworth on its own. Uh, I think we had an average of about 10 people that attended uh, for various reasons. Uh, I think, you know, attendance always um, uh, varies, um, but this won't be the only one. There will be more. Uh, I'm aware that that a large part of Kenilworth had quite late, quite a late notice of, of the meeting. So my apologies for that. Um, but I do want to make it a regular occurrence where I report back, uh, not only on these projects that that affect our ward more directly, but also on what actually happens in council and some of the debates that happen. Um, I, I remember reading Helen Susman's uh, autobiography, and I was always inspired by when she, at the end of every parliamentary sitting, she'd go back to her constituency uh, and report back on, on what positions she took and what she fought for. So I think it's really important that we do the same thing. Um, and I wanna try and inculcate that culture as well as just a, a to and fro accountability mechanism. Um, and then to segue into, into the, the, the IDP process that we just had, uh, this, this afternoon I had a phone call with one of the officials in the city about trying to figure out if it's possible to uh, make Adley Street more pedestrian friendly because there really are lots of people who walk in that area uh, and he reminded me that you know it's a great idea and there's been lots of studies have been done about it before uh, but unless we get that idea 
into the budget, uh, it's unlikely to happen. And that's exactly what we said right in the beginning uh, when it came to ID issues or planning issues or ward projects uh, in the ward specifically. Um, so I was uh, quite, um, I think, uh, perhaps pleased. I'm not sure if surprised is fair. Um, I was surprised, well, maybe I am surprised, surprised by how common the trends were across all three sessions. Um, over and over again, safety was brought up, uh, uh, and particularly safety around walking in the afternoon um, and, and safety around um, sort of house break-ins. Uh, then traffic calming was also a really major issue. Uh, they did center around particular streets. Uh, so Bowood, for example, Highwick Avenue, for example, um, streets where, where you know, uh, cars or motorists tend to use them as a bit of a rat run. Um, I found that uh, interesting that it was across the board. Then our, our ward is very um, uh, environmentally orientated. Uh, people really want to uh, you know, see trees being planted, which is great. Um, and then there's a few managerial or real structural issues. Um, but I'm also aware that, that Kirsten has done, you know, in, in detail analysis and will be giving the top five uh, issues that uh, were raised. Uh, there were some really creative solutions as well. Uh, so thank you so much to everyone for doing that. Uh, what's going to happen at the end of this process or after the session is, is I'll take what we have um, developed so far and I'll go speak to our our sub council manager to see what we can actually turn into projects and, and get into the budgets of the different line items, what we need to take to the ward allocation, what perhaps is part of a bigger plan that the city has. Um, and, um, you know, we'll have that and, and I'll report back on, on, on what the findings of that are. Uh, but of course, the IDP process in itself uh, and the budgeting process in itself is also a bigger city uh, uh, activity. So in March, uh, I think it'll be the end of February, early March, uh, all of the, the outcomes of these processes, um, I'm not sure if you'll see on Facebook that the mayor was out in different communities filling in surveys, et cetera. The outcomes of these processes will be put into a draft plan. That plan will then be opened up for essentially criticism or comments from, this, from the public and they'll then tweak it thereafter. And I think that'll be another really great opportunity to actually have a bit of a feedback loop to see how much of what we spoke about has translated into what the government's actually going to be focusing on. The government, sorry, what we will be focusing on. Sometimes I forget that that I'm in council. Um, so I, I, I'm looking forward to that process because I think it'll be a real opportunity for many residents to actually see a, a reward for this effort. Uh, a lot of the other things will take a lot longer. Uh, I mean, I think we all are aware, for example, homelessness was was um, brought up across the board and we're all aware of how complex that is. Uh, and it will take many, many years, if not decades, to actually solve those problems. Um, so I'm looking forward to the feedback that we'll be getting now. It's all looking really interesting. Uh, as I mentioned, there are trends. Uh, I'm also very pleased with how compassionate our community is. Uh, across the board, people were looking for um, uh, solutions which were aware of people's humanity and dignity. And, and I think that that's very, very promising. So thank you so much for that. Um, but on that note, Kirsten, I will hand it over to you again to take us to the next few steps. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Mikhail. Uh, there's still loads of opportunities for Mikhail to jump in and give some uh, kind of feedback and reflection. So we'll definitely be coming uh, back to you, Mikhail. So, um, so I really appreciate uh, that, that reflection. And I do really want to uh, thank the Ward Council for, be, for being so engaged in the sessions and really just kind of listening and understanding and, and kind of digging deep on some of these issues. Um, so what I wanted to do is, is just take us quickly to uh, screen share over here, screen share Kirsten, um, and just do a quick recap of, of what it is that the IDP is and give us, just kind of recenter us into what it is that we're going to be commenting on um, just prior to to us sharing the the feedback from the comments that we've received, and um, so it's very important, I think, to just bear in mind that the IDP is a statutory planning mechanism. Um, it is it is linked to the 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 want to do good and the promise to do good in terms of uh, political leadership, but it has a lot of tick boxes that need 
to be addressed in terms of um, planning law and importantly it's aligned with other policies um, across spheres from national government and provincial government as well as local government policies that sometimes have a slightly longer um, view for example a comprehensive integrated tra uh, transport plan uh, and the municipal spatial development plan which both uh, really impact the way that Cape Town develops. Um, I think what's critical to remember and, and Mikhail has pointed that out is how important it is to understand that everything that's mentioned in the IT, IDP is and will be linked to a budget line item. And so this initial phase of, of public participation really starts not only pointing um, the representatives in the right direction, but also points the budget in the direction that it needs to go to support the ideas that are important to you. And so in a nutshell, the IDP really is answers the question, what is local, going, lo local government going to do with what it has to create the city that you need? And that is in the next five years. Although we know that there are certain um, projects and plans that do run for longer than a five-year um, span, but for the most part, it's a five-year period that we're looking at. Um, so I, I shared this slide in our initial uh, introductory session, but I just wanted to just remind us that What's important about um, commenting on the IDP and, and being involved in the process of, of adding your voice is to speak to the document itself. It's structured in four parts, and you'll see that in our neighborhood sessions, we try to steer uh, our participants in that direction, in that there is a, a vision and strategic portion, and then there's an implementation and project and program portion. And so we do need to balance quite carefully to to be visionary and to be um, kind of optimistic and, and to point our city in a direction, but to do so with rather granular level plans and programs, which are not only budgeted for, which we've discussed, but are also uh, measurable, not only in and of themselves in terms of projects and programs and how those projects progress, but also the way in which city officials um, are evaluated in terms of implementing those projects uh, from an uh, level point of view. And then, of course, as, as you'll know, all of these things, uh, regardless of budget or project, happen spatially. And it's very important for us to have uh, a spatiality in mind, um, not only in order that the city will be um, equitable in terms of where resources are, but also that sometimes uh, one solution might uh, be kind of spatially beneficial in a number of ways. Uh, and it's good to think spatially. So as an encourage, please, can you contribute to the IDP with a structure in mind? Uh, and you'll see in, in our feedback, we're sort of directing you in that way. Um, so that really was just a quick recap. I don't want to go into it in too much detail, um, but in the documentation that we provide you, we will provide you with a copy of the current IDP in order that you can see how that layout sort of works in a bit more detail. I think the document is approximately 155 pages. Uh, and so this one graphic doesn't quite do it justice, but please remember to contribute with the structure of the IDP in mind. Okay, so on to the timelines. Uh, as Mikhail mentioned, uh, the timelines for this period, this first phase of commenting is quite short. Um, and so you'll see on the graphic on screen here, we're here at, in our ward facilitation week, we were assisting the ward councillor to, to kind of rally the troops and make the voice louder. Um, and there is a second phase. Um, but what is important to realize is that the voice that you add now is the voice that goes into shaping the budget. And then the second phase in March and April will be the budget attached to the plan, which you will be critiquing. So it's very important that we, that we do the best we can in the short period of time that we have. And so in the sessions that we posted thus far, uh, five meetings, including this one, we've managed to assemble approximately 250 comments. Uh, and in, in total, we would have had approximately 185 RSVPs to attend one or more of the sessions. So it really is fantastic that, that we've managed to have, um, I think, so much participation in the period of time that we've had to plan. Um, and I certainly do thank everyone for their commitment um, and their engagement um, with all of the material that we've presented. Um, all of these comments will be available to you uh, in a document format, which we have 
uh, analyze and put together, I think it will help you uh, create your, your submission. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but let's see what happened at our neighborhood session. Okay, so um, what I wanna do is, is at this stage, is maybe just hand back uh, to Mikhail and just he can just give us an outline of the, the, the spaces that we were in and just, um, you know, just some of the, just a couple of reflections on what it was like um, having in-person sessions. So Mikhail, I'm gonna hand over to you for just another quick uh, introduction reflection on the difference and your first set of neighborhood sessions really since being elected as councillor. So Mikhail, I'm gonna give you another two or three minutes of microphone time. Uh, great, thank you so much, uh, uh, Kirsten. Um, <clears throat> so I think that uh, I was uh, very pleased with how people participated. Uh, I know that often uh, these kinds of activities are quite different to what we're used to as adults. Um, you know, I think uh, as you get older, things tend to become more like presentations and, and sort of report backs. Um, and certainly that's the way government uh, uh, tends to work. Uh, and it really seldomly works in such an interactive manner. So it was uh, uh, funny to see some of the things that were mentioned in terms of uh, what you would do if you were mayor for the day. Um, I kept hopping on about fixing the trains because I think that's really important. Uh, and then also to, to see that a lot of residents wanted actual like engagement. So it wasn't just about recording what issues there were, what solutions they might come up with, um, but actually uh, also being able to ask, ask questions and have questions answered. Um, and really, um, I found a willingness for people to think through the problem with you. Um, but that being said, I think that there is a, a fair amount of, um, and I think this is a, a, an indictment on our part as the leaders, a fair amount of like misunderstanding of how processes in council work and how much influence we actually have as, as councillors. Um, and I think it's, it's helpful to note that, that we can never tell an official what to do. We can never uh, dictate that a budget should be allocated a certain way. Uh, we can only do that through committees or, or, or make suggestions or that kind of thing. Um, and so it was, it was really interesting seeing some of the, the, the Q&A and actually being able to discuss stuff and particularly in Claremont, uh, the, the three issues that we picked. Uh, so what we would do is you would note on the map and write a, a, a number on your sticker. Three issues that we picked have actually come up uh, already in the, in the past 50 days uh, through emails. Uh, and it was Bowood, uh, Bowood Traffic Intersection and the Claremont uh, Bowling Club. Um, and I, I forget the third one, um, but these things have come up before and really it became, in the Claremont session, it became quite a sort of collaborative, this is how we can solve the problem kind of thing. Uh, and I really appreciate that a lot uh, because now it's just a few uh, of, of the uh, neighborhood sessions. Hope that covers what. what That's fantastic. Uh, thanks, thanks, Mikhail. Yeah, I, I certainly um, would I, sort of, like to just kind of underscore how how lovely it was once solution we went from a concern um sharing session into solutions and then and then uh, folks you know from within the community sort of volunteering and helping us to understand work that they'd already done um and there really is a huge amount of 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 effort being made to overcome some of the concerns and and issues that people have at a local level and that was great to be able to kind of connect people who were interested with people who are already um, doing the work. So that certainly was uh, a wonderful and sort of beneficial part of our sessions that I wasn't uh, expecting to, to have. Um, I think with regards to how the sessions were, were laid out, I think it's important to maybe just give some context to the comments that you'll see that, that you'll have access to in terms of what everyone had contributed over, these, over this time. Um, to say that what, we, that what we did is we really wanted to to structure our activities and our time together and this sort of journey that we had together with, with those people who had joined us um, to go in the same manner through a thinking process that EP is asking us to contribute to. And that is looking at the city at a sort of a broad visionary level, um, but also understanding that the city is run and managed by people making decisions. And then 
zoom into a slightly more localized level, but still thinking in a visionary way, but thinking at a at a, the scale of neighborhood. And then we sort of deep dive into mapping solutions, like Michaela said, um, in a very practical way, locating very specific issues, very specifically on a map and trying to collate those with a, sort of a solution mindset. So the first activity was a question, what would you do if you were mayor for the day? Sort of reminds me a little bit of when I was in school and, and anything felt possible. Um, and it was great to be able to remind people that, that anything is possible because there is a mayor making decisions every day and we can, we can be a part of that process. Um, and then the second activity was describe your neighborhood when it works. So that activity we really tried to just ask people to use um, words and language to describe uh, what a neighborhood that they'd be proud to live in. And that was, that I think that was a really great um, process to, to just go through. And then, and then with mapping, what we did is we gave a little bit of feedback afterwards to find where there were clusters of issues. Because um, I think both Mikhail and I believe that if you look at issues and spaces that often one solution or one innovative solution might be able to solve a number of issues um, because they are located spatially cheek by jowl. So those are the, facility, the activities we facilitated to try and make it a bit more engaging and also to, to help to shape the way you think. Um, because in essence, what we're doing is facilitating and training you as residents to make the best IDP uh, input and comment that you can um, to shape the city. So what I want to share with you now is uh, really um, what it is that, that came out in terms of the five most uh, cited um, observations and comments and concerns. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just before we jump in there, I see on my agenda I've got time for questions. So you've got a little sneak peek there. But what I want to do is maybe just spend a few minutes going to questions and just opening it up to the floor um, with one of two things. If you'd like to reflect on the process, if you were one of the neighborhood session participants, I'd love for you to um, just give a little bit of feedback on that if you if you'd like to take that opportunity. Or we can open the floor to We'll, or we'll open the floor uh, to any questions that anyone has around uh, the process or anything we've shared up until now about the IDP and the facilitation uh, sessions that we've hosted. So let me give us a few minutes to just get onto the floor here and see if there are any questions. Um, you're welcome to type your question in the chat box if you feel, um, or you can put your hand up and I will respond to a hand. So let's see if anyone has a question at this point. I'm trying not to be too presentary. Right, this is a hand. Um, okay. Okay, I don't see any, any hands up or any comments in the bar. That's fine. Okay, all right. If you do have a question, please uh, put that in the, in the chat bar and I'll get to you once the question comes to you, it's fine, no pressure now. Um, let's head back to share screen and have a look at those five comments and then we'll come back to some questions. Okay, so of the approximately 250 comments that we got in, um, these were the top five issues and observations. Um, attached to those were a number of solutions, um, very creative and, and, and very empathic solutions as, as the councillor mentioned. Um, the top issues in no order of priority yet are um, homelessness and informality. So that includes um, informal trade, uh, that includes um, folks who are looking for recycling opportunities and going through trash, that includes people living on the street or occupying places that have other uses such as subways. So there really is a, um, people taking opportunities that are apparent, but opportunities that are, are neither uh, accepted nor legal. So that would be homelessness and informality. Uh, the second issue that came up quite a lot was vehicle speeding and overall traffic violation. Um, a lot of speeding issues and a lot of really creative solutions around cars going slower um, and traffic violations. A lot of those included um, rat running, 
um, with vehicles taking quite a route to to get around congestion or um, cars kind of just trying to make their way through areas that are, are sort of quieter and more residential. So there's quite a lot of that. Um, and then safety and crime prevention were really a topic uh, in and of themselves that were covered. It, it really, the comments that we received ranged from sort of very violent crime uh, situations that were mentioned all the way, all the way to the other sort of scale, side of the scale around sort of feeling intimidated, um, feeling unsafe, and just generally uh, the need for, for visible policing and crime, you know, crime prevention uh, uh, efforts. Um, cleanliness and refuse removal sort of seem relatively, uh, I should say obvious, but it seems like a, a kind of a service delivery issue that maybe wouldn't make it into the top five. But I think that uh, particularly for uh, Ward 59 working with the team now, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of green open spaces where um, cleanliness and refuse removal is not done well, um, do have a, a massive impact on people's uh, perception of the area and I think general well-being. Um, and then and then the fifth issue was around city governance and operational management that that came up quite a lot, um, particularly in reference to systems like the C3 logging system and um, just understanding what some of the turnaround times were on uh, the provision of basic services, uh, the repair of, of um, issues that arise in the ward and just generally a, a sense of expectation management and a level of excellence that is uh, expected but not necessarily always experienced. So that sort of covers the, the top five um, topics. And what you'll see in the document that, we, that we've kind of collated these into, we've tried to structure those to speak to specific um, directorates. So you'll see we've tried to give a little bit more information there um, and sort of try and link that to the IDP uh, to kind of comment on the document um, in its entirety. But what I want to do is I don't want to assume what those priorities are if we had to prioritize this group. And I also don't want to assume that everybody agrees with those. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up a poll. And that is gonna, that should come up on your screen, but bear with me, it's the first time I've done a poll in Zoom, so we're all learning here. Um, and that poll is gonna give you the option to choose of those five, which you think is a top priority. Now, by not choosing the other four doesn't mean that they're not important, but we would like to get a sense from the room this evening of what that kind of priority scale or that priority cascade would be. So. I'm going to go ahead and open this poll. And this should come up on your screen now. Can you see a poll popping up on your screen, Mikhail? Yes. OK, cool. So I'm going to give us um, a couple of uh, minutes, I think a minute and a bit for you to choose which one of the following concerns you feel most strongly about. And then I'm going to share that with us. And then I'm going to take one or two questions and comments around what it is that we've shared and potentially if you feel very strongly about something that hasn't uh, trended, this would be, that could be a good time to share that. Um, but I'm going to give us another minute just to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to click on the poll. Okay, so I've got about two or three more people just to um, do that. Okay. Cool, okay. And pull. All right, let's see if we can share those results. Okay, all right, so you can see there, uh, if you give me a thumbs up, Mikhail, you can see the, the polls coming up there. Um, so ranked uh, top is uh, homelessness and informality, and then second is uh, crime prevention, and those two rating incredibly strongly 
uh, compared to vehicle speeding and traffic violations, and then cleanliness and rubbish and litter removal didn't feature at all. So that's that's super interesting for us, and was absolutely, um, uh, I think, in terms of the purpose of the poll, I think it would give Mikhail a little bit of direction in terms of of where there's a strength or a frustration or or a passion, but it might be a fleeting passion. Um, and I think what I also want to encourage everyone is it's just you know something that you feel strongly about may not just be you experiencing it, and I think it's very important to to just see if there's a solidarity with a frustration or concern that you have, um, and perhaps if a concern that you have isn't shared by others, that is also a learning in and of itself. So let me stop sharing there. Okay, if I see your hand up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing and head over to having a couple of questions. Um, all right, let me go to some questions. We'll do questions for about, I think we can probably take about four or five questions depending on time. Um, so let me head over to Irvine. Irvine, you can switch on your microphone and uh, share your question or your statement uh, with the group. Yeah, hello everybody. Um, the, is it naive to disconnect the homelessness and the crime? Because it would, it would seem that if the homeless people don't have paid income, um, how are they living other than crime? But I, uh, is there any data on that? Because I know that one of our colleagues here, Jill, feels that um, this is not the case. Um, do we have any, any info on that? Um, sure, Irvin, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask Mikhail to have a first go at responding to that. Cause I think in terms of my facilitation, I'd like to uh, encourage as much communication with your counselor. So Mikhail, if you don't mind me putting it on the spot, maybe you can respond to your impressions and feelings on that. Uh, no, that's fine. Thank you so much. Um, so I don't think it's a direct link, uh, Irvine. I think that um, uh, there are certainly criminal elements amongst the homeless. Uh, but I think that there are quite a number of people who legitimately uh, are in need and they know that if they come to uh, the southern suburbs that they're most likely to get some kind of handout. Uh, but then I also think that there are people amongst them who are uh, selling drugs or, 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 or um, using drugs uh, and who also are, are kind of, you know, uh, stealing things in, in some form or harassing people in some form. Um, I think it's also important to note that a lot of uh, sort of the drug usage of people who um, live on the street are um, as a result of it's almost like a coping mechanism because of how difficult it is or it's cold or something like that. Um, so, so I think that I would tend to actually agree with Jill that uh, uh, not all homeless people are criminals. Uh, and um, actually that most of them are just kind of people who really need help, uh, but that there certainly is an element of people who are, are who steal things uh, in, in uh, sorry, who, who are criminals in and amongst <clears throat> the homeless people. Um, so I, yeah, I would, I would tend to agree with Joel. Yeah, okay, that, that, that's more, <clears throat> more my, my gut, gut feel as well. Yeah. Um. Because there's 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 a huge difference between the the regular cohort of homeless people we used to have before lockdown, and then the other ones who've occupied certain subways and threatened me, or you know like that that terrible uh, I don't know what you call it a, a village in in Woodstock where they all shooting up with needles on the street, and I, and I agree they're not all the same people. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I think that, um, uh, oh, not skip my mind. Oh, right, that's what I'm going to say. Um, uh, I, I don't think there's an immediate link between if you're homeless, therefore you, your only source of income is to steal. I actually think that if you're homeless, uh, the dominant mm -hmm. source of income is the empathetic reaction from people to give. Uh, whereas what we need to do is to actually find, try and find another <laughs> way to give them give uh, a way that actually helps people to uh, be in a more stable environment um, uh, and break that sort of unhealthy and, and dangerous cycle for any human being to live on the street. 
Um, yeah. and, and that's that's the trick. Um, because you know, if you stand at the robot, uh, you pick any old robot, and you have, you know, I don't know, uh, twenty cars come past you in the course of the day, and each of them give you two rand, then you've got forty rand, and you know, from that you can probably just get enough to to, to get by. Um, so, so I think that that's the real main source of income, uh, and this is why ever since you know, right during the campaign. Uh, I was repeatedly talking about we rather need to give to organizations. We have to keep saying that. Uh, and we have to keep saying neighbors as well, uh, because that's the real way. Um, but I th I'm looking forward to next year uh, when we start up some kind of a working group of sort where we can actually have this conversation on an ongoing basis, because I think it's a very difficult problem. And I, I don't know, I think I don't properly understand it right now. So I don't have a, a lot of good solutions in mind. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mikhail, and thanks, Ivan. I think I certainly think that you know what I took from that is that I think assumptions uh, really need to be understood by being involved uh, for the right decisions to be made. So I 100% am looking forward to that working group, um, Mikhail. I think it'll be helpful and connecting uh, Ward 59 with other wards who are dealing with similar issues. I do think it is a systemic issue and certainly a, a systemic a, a solution from you know a bit of a broader level would be really helpful. So I certainly hope you get some support in your working group, uh, Mikhail. Okay, so the next question I wanted to go to uh, is Pitt, Pitt 100%. Uh, Pitt's question in the chat bar is perhaps an important issue missed is the maintenance of our infrastructure, roads, water, sewage, uh, electricity, etc. You're 100% correct. That came in at like number six in terms of topics and I, top five just felt a little bit more like an Instagram post. Um, but maintenance is, is a really critical um, aspect of, or just urban urban management is a really critical issue that I think relates across directorates. Um, I want to ask Mikhail to maybe just comment on um, maintenance and urban management uh, going forward and, and just what it is that you feel is the city's perspective is changing on, on urban management. Mikhail, do you want to just jump in on that just with regards to the direction shifting? Maybe that could be helpful or interesting to you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I actually don't want to comment on the director shifting uh, because it's supposed to go through the council processes. Um, so for those that are sort of accustomed to the way that sort of accustomed to engaging with the city, especially the different uh, directorates, um, it um, would be interesting for you to know that uh, there is a, a change being proposed. Uh, so tomorrow uh, on YouTube, the live streaming of the council meeting will be there. I think it starts at 10. Um, and at some point, we'll, we'll have a debate about that. So, so it'll be really interesting to see uh, what some of the other parties also bring to the, the table. Um, but just otherwise, generally on maintenance, I think, um, to be honest with you, Pitt, we have, um, we've dropped the ball when it comes to maintenance uh, and and the mayor has has uh, definitely said so during the campaign and when he noted the fact that we've had so much capital underspend for the last few years he's then you know also noted that now that we're in council um, so one thing in particular that i have uh, raised with the sub council manager already is the sewage issue i know that in alice road last week there was another sewage sort of overflow because of a blockage uh, and about a week and a half, or maybe two weeks ago now, there was one on Claremont Main Road as well. So these are very, very serious issues. Uh, it's a health hazard. It's just unpleasant to smell. Uh, and it's just not the standard that we promise uh, as a political party. And I obviously say that now and put my DA hat on because I'm a, a DA councillor. Um, so it's really important that we get that right. Uh, when it comes to, to roads, for example, as a ward councillor, I have zero sway over that. Um, in fact, it might even be all of those items because, because they can be used uh, as sort of political capital, um, uh, it's kept away from us. So there's a schedule for when roads are being repaired uh, uh, or improved, and, and you know, we can be informed of when it is, but we can't move items up and down. Um, and one thing I certainly want to do is to communicate more effectively on you know, when your road is being repaired kind of thing. But when it comes to potholes and stuff like that, we you know, can get that going almost immediately. Um, so sewage, I've asked uh, the sub council manager for input on the roads and and you know when those are going to be happening. Uh, I've noted the stuff about streetlights. That is a pure infrastructure maintenance issue. 
Um, and so I think um, uh, you partly are right. We didn't raise it a lot in these uh, uh, meetings. Um, uh, and maybe it came across more in terms of people's experience. Uh, and, and I think this speaks to the spatial things that, that, that Kirsten keeps mentioning. You know, if you have verges that are kind of overgrown as they are now because the tender uh, uh, elapsed, uh, combined with um, streetlights not working, which really is an electricity maintenance issue, uh, then what you have is the experience of feeling unsafe. Um, and so I think that that this is now the challenge for us, uh, us being myself uh, and, and Kirsten, well, maybe not Kirsten, maybe just me and, and the sub-council manager, <laughs> if you keep Kirsten, um, <laughs> then, then um, it's to take what is being described to us as being the issues that people experience every day, some of the solutions that have been suggested, and how do we actually think about that in terms of uh, uh, you know, tangible things that the city can do to improve it. And, I, and personally, I find it very exciting, but also that's that's the whole point here, I think. Uh, thanks, Mikhail. Sorry for putting you on the spot there about the directorate question. Uh, I guess it just gives everyone an enthusiasm to come back and hear it from you again later. Um, okay, so Cathy, there was a really good, uh, there was a really good question from you. Uh, and it reads as follows in the chat bar, will the solutions to various issues raised in Ward 59 be applied with or without modification in other wards? So maybe I want to just sort of preface uh, Mikhail's response uh, to that by, by saying that we, we absolutely, as our organization have come across a lot of similar issues in other wards. Um, and I think that there is, a really wonderful groundswell happening where ward councillors can share issues, come up with a, a solution that works across wards. And there's a, a camaraderie amongst ward councillors that I feel quite enthusiastic about uh, for the first time. So I would say that I'm feeling quite excited about the fact that Ward 59 could lead in providing solutions for, for other uh, wards across the city. Um, but that's my optimism. Uh, Mikhail, can I hand over to you and you can give a response to that question, please? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I think the, unfortunately, the answer is is a little bit, or my, my response is a little bit um, powerless in a way. Um, I hope that, that what we come up with here will be taken up into the IDP. The real thing that'll be sort of the, the, the pushing, nagging uh, um, element of it is if this actually has been found in other areas of, as well. Uh, there are uh, participation processes happening throughout the city and a lot of uh, civic organizations have also been, I think, asked to, to give input because uh, actually staying connected, perhaps you'll know better there. Um, and, and the process is slightly different. It's not perhaps as engaging uh, uh, and perhaps also not as, um, what's that word, sort of back and forth and, and transparent about what's possible and what's not and that kind of thing. Uh, there are two options that the city has been running. One is this online survey link, uh, and another one is a, a sort of a, a full-in survey that people are going around and, and filling them in. So, so if similar things come up, uh, then uh, I think that what we learn here will certainly be applied everywhere else. Uh, so that's the one part of it. The second part of it is that uh, if there are 250 comments and we are 28 on this chat now, this is maybe a bit of a, a sneaky trick, but if each person takes each comment and copies it and sends it, then it's effectively 250 inputs times you know, 28. Uh, and if we've had 185 people who are on the mailing list essentially because they are RSVP to this uh, process, then again, a uh, bit of quick maths, you know, Ward 59 can contribute at least 25,000 comments, I think. Um, and that's phenomenal. That's just from one ward saying, these are our issues. If, if we could have that level of input uh, across the ward, across the city, sorry, that'd be amazing. Um, so that's the second part. And then that's please just a bit of a plug to actually when the document is shared, copy and paste those comments and get them in, especially if you agree with them. Well, it was only if you agree with them actually. Um, and then the last thing is, is that um, I will admit that, that what we, did find is actually it's the same it's it's similar issues that my colleagues and I speak about informally uh, and I see that actually the ward council for finance is is, is in the the the, the what's it called in the session 
uh, we speak about, you know, informally, a lot of colleagues very, we had a caucus meeting two, three days ago, and we spoke very, very frankly about the sewage issue. Um, we spoke very frankly about manhole covers being stolen, um, uh, street lights uh, being, uh, you know, kind of not working. Um, and so, and so I think a lot of what we're seeing coming out of this detailed process is actually already resonating across the city. Um, what I will do also is I will take our findings and really kind of go around and, and speak to as many officials as possible and, and speak to as many of my colleagues as possible. Um, so that yes, Kathy, we can get it out there as, as much as possible. Uh, thanks, Mikhail. Uh, and thanks to everyone who's been posting in the chat bar. There's some incredible comments and observations and concerns coming out. Um, and just to let you know that that we'll, we collate the chat bar input and comments uh, with the same degree of care that we do with our in-person sessions. So these are, are very valuable and will certainly be um, shared with the group uh, at large. And uh, one, I think just to wrap up, it's not so much a question, I guess, but a, a concern, um, Nico, um, just asking how do we change the handout culture towards the homeless and replace it with contributing to organizations who care for the homeless? Um, and then he has a, a relatively lengthy but incredibly this heartfelt uh, request about how it is that that support could be through um, something where the community can raise money uh, in a really creative way. So, um, so I think I kind of I want to sort of end off on that with an uh, encouragement uh, to Mikhail to say that I, it, there's many occasions that that uh, citizens and residents have sort of come up to us and said, "Hey, I'm really doing this wonderful thing. Um, please don't." wait for government to do the wonderful things. Um, please be encouraged to just give Mikhail a call and, and uh, you know, things like that can actually happen. Mikhail, did you, do you want to just respond to that? And then we'll move on to the commenting on IT. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't want to uh, take from the process, but I had coffee yesterday with um, uh, one of the ladies, she's a resident, not actually not in our area, she's in Ward 62. Uh, but the project is very active in our areas, and it's it's the LPR cameras. Um, LPR stands for License Plate Technician, if for those of you that aren't aware. And what is significant is that actually that entire uh, pr project since about 2015 or 2014, I think, uh, is has been entirely citizen-led, um, and and the city has been helpful along the way. Uh, but a lot of what the city wanted to do in 2015 is only really happening now, but just because of the nature of the beast, you know, it's such a big institution. Uh, but this entire citizen project has actually created a, a sort of safety um, program, which is leading the world in the way we use this information. And so I, I certainly agree with you. And thanks for that um, reminder. All right. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Mikhail. And uh, please carry on uh, typing comments and issues and questions in the chat bar. I'll try and get to as many of those as I can, but Mikhail will certainly have uh, access to them and be able to answer uh, in time if it's not this evening. All right, I'm gonna head back to our slides and we're done with our questions. Okay, so the next, the next um, agenda item I really wanted to touch on is the importance of the contribution. Now we've spoken a lot about all these kind of comments that have come in and it's been really, really great. And I think I think wonderful for Mikhail um, in our time together to sort of to sort of you know get stuck into into all of what can be in Ward 59. But ultimately the purpose of these sessions is to facilitate, equip and encourage you as residents um, or people who consider Ward 59 the place you spend the most time to make a submission towards the five-year plan for the city. Now, Mikhail uh, and myself as, as kind of the wranglers of this process, we certainly will be submitting our comments and, and feedback, but ultimately the city sees every submission uh, as a standalone uh, comment. And so for us to collate 250 comments and then send in you know, one you know, wonderfully edited uh, a PDF document is, is really going to rob you of the opportunity of having a voice heard. So, so I really want to encourage you to use one of these three methods to submit comments to IDT. So with all of those comments in hand, which, which I'll tell you how I'm going to email them to you in a second, um, you can email those submissions 
pick what people have said, things you agree with, kind of make it your own, bold, red, all those things that you really, like, you feel really passionate about, make it your own and email them to the city of Cape Town. Now, I'm going to ask Roland to please put that email, there has to put that email uh, address into the chat bar now. So that is the email address that you're going to need to use. You're going to send it to public.participation at capetown.gov.za. All right, so that's one method, and that's going to give you an open door to speak your heart, to speak your mind, uh, and to share everything that you uh, have learned or and care about in your, you know, and the city at large. The second method is to complete the online survey. There is an IDP survey, I think it's called the priority survey, uh, and you can click on that by using the link that Roland has put in the chat bar now. Uh, so you can use that link. Um, or you can use the online customer portal or collaboration platform, um, which Roland has also put in the chat bar now. So you can use one or all three of those methods to make your voice heard and underpin and encourage and use the voices of other people in the award to shout loudly and to encourage and to, and to have a say in how the city uses its resources in the next five years. So as I've said, Open Streets Cape Town, so that's us. And Mikhail will be submitting our own um, documentation. Um, but please can I ask you to do that. And the project manager in me wants to encourage you to do that before the Christmas period arrives. The closing date is the 7th of January, but I do feel that there's an energy and enthusiasm around this process that would best be utilized sooner than later. So those are your contribution methods. Okay, so what I wanna do is, I'm gonna leave that, that'll be in the chat bar for you to just copy paste. Um, I would like to go to another poll. Yes, you, sorry, Dave, you answer your question. You can use all three methods. You can use one or all of those. Um, okay, so what I wanna do is just get a sense from the room of how it is that you will be commenting. Um, and the reason that I want to just have a look at that is just to see which of those methods is going to be best for people, um, what you're leaning towards, and uh, so that if we need to assist anyone, we know so we can, where we can put our energy and our time. So you should see a poll on screen now, which says, how will you comment? And so your options are, I will email comments, I will participate in the online IDP survey, I will email and take the survey, or you can choose, I will not make any submissions, which is also totally fine. Um, you can choose any of those, and I think they, they have, they carry equal weight, um, but if we are to help and facilitate uh, further for the next couple of weeks, and the next few weeks, that it would really be really helpful for the team to know uh, which you will be choosing. So I'm gonna give everyone just one more minute to, to do that, although you're very quick pollers, everyone's on the buttons here, it's really nice to see. Um, all right. Okay. All right, so Nico, there is a, uh, there is one IDP survey, to answer your question in the chat bar, there's one IDP priority survey that is connected to the link that uh, Roland has shared now. To the best of my knowledge, you can only fill it in once. Um, I haven't filled it in yet, so I can't speak to it in too much detail, but um, that is one priority survey that's been created by the city of Cape Town. Okay. All right, so that is the poll. Let me show you how that all came out. Okay, so the majority of people will be emailing and taking the survey, so that'd be awesome. And then there's a combination of emailing and IDP survey for the rest. So, and everyone seems to be making the submission, which is brilliant. So thank you for that. that. That is kind of slightly more administrative question, that one, but it does help us to uh, facilitate residents further in the next couple of days. Okay. So sorry, there you go, there's the other results there. All right. You can see how everyone is leaning to what everyone's leaning towards. All right, let me stop sharing and we're just gonna go through a couple of uh, questions before we wrap up and tell you what's next. Um, okay, 
So Irvine, the, the question that Irvine has posted is, is it a plain email or should we use a template? That is a brilliant question. Uh, it is 100% a plain email that you can just kind of uh, write and um, construct in the manner that you feel is best. If I can suggest that you copy paste text into the email and not rely on an attachment opening, that would be best. Um, I know that the people who are, who are processing this information are under a lot of pressure uh, because the time is short. So I think just to, to be fair and to give your comment the best chance, I would uh, try and fit that all in the body of the email um, rather than having something, somebody, something that somebody has to open and then process. That's just, if I was in that position, I think it would be easier. Um, okay, let's see into other things. Yeah, so there's a couple of there's a couple of questions that have come out um, that actually did emerge, especially in our in our session in Kenilworth around densification. That has that has come up a number of times, um, and I don't want uh, the folks who've commented on identification to feel like that got kind of lost on the wayside by the wayside. Um, there are a lot of issues around or, or kind of like impacts that identification in Ward 59 have on the day to day experiences of the residents. So I think, as Mikhail had mentioned, that impacts on um, service delivery just with regards to um, uh, infrastructure that may need to be maintained. It's gonna, that's gonna, those maintenance issues are going to make themselves apparent in the case of of sewage and so on. Um, I think, Mikhail, maybe if I can just pass the microphone over to you, you can just uh, comment on and just um, just acknowledge the densification question, because um, I think it is something that people feel quite strongly about that we didn't mention previously. Would you be okay with that? Sorry, shopping. Um, yeah, uh, so I, I was actually trying to read Hank's comment um, because he also gave input on densification. Um, I just want to quickly have a squiz. Okay. Um, all right. So I, I think on, on the one hand, um, uh, densification is going to happen uh, and, and the city wants it to happen. Uh, I'm also very pro it actually happening because it makes uh, the city cheaper to run, which in the long term, unfortunately not immediately, but in the long term, it will uh, help the city to spend your rates uh, and levies more effectively, and it would actually uh, reduce uh, that burden on, on the residents. Um, however, um, I really do take the point that residents can, or sorry, that the city can be more cognizant to the objections that residents give. Uh, and uh, certain also more sensitive to the kind of heritage or layout of a particular area. Uh, just today, I was looking at Google Maps and trying to figure out if we could actually create almost like a visit our villages type walk thing, uh, which connects, uh, uh, you know, Rosebank to, to Newlands, to Claremont, to Kenilworth type of thing. Um, because I think there is certainly an argument to be made that uh, there are pockets in our ward uh, which deserves some version of heritage status, um, and uh, yeah, and 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 that would go a long way to actually helping the um, uh, what's it called? Actually helping the uh, uh, sort of densification to be more cognizant of what um, uh, works for the area. Uh, there is a particular uh, sort of. Um, urban design term uh, called gentle densification. So we're not just going for big, you know, high rises because what you actually are seeing happening in the Claremont CBD uh, is, is the result of um, a sort of rapid densification, all those blockages. Uh, and so it's, it's certainly will be helpful to uh, infrastructure upgrades. Um, and, and, and that's what I would certainly advocate for. So, so there are two, uh, there are three, points, I think, and, and Debbie might know better here because she's actually in, in property development, but I think there are three points where a public member public can give input. The first one is when a developer applies for departures, and that's like if you want to be higher than what you're allowed to be or close to the boundary than you're allowed to be, uh, for example. 
Uh, the second one, I think, is actually having the plans approved of what will be built there. Uh, and then the third one is if there's any heritage uh, uh, elements to what's being designed. Um, uh, so maybe, Debbie, if, if you want to give us some input on what on where the points are when the public can actually uh, have a say. Uh, all those applications do come past my desk as, as the ward councillor. Um, and, and I, of course, will consider each case uh, on a merit basis. Um, but maybe, Kirsten, if I can give an opportunity to Debbie to give us input, if she's keen. Uh, sure, Debbie, are you happy to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mikhail, the first one is actually heritage. So we're dealing with one in Claremont Avenue at the moment. So the first application the developer makes is heritage. And then the second one is the departure or rezoning. And the third is the plans. But uh, if heritage, uh, yeah, if heritage play ball, they can demand a site development plan, which then basically dictates what the developer is going to do in the town planning application. And that is when Heritage invoke a thing called geese. But um, sadly, with Claremont Avenue, um, we went to appeal and Heritage Western Cape have just said, no, tough luck. And unfortunately, we know that if it goes to the city of Cape Town with Pierre Hoffer's attitude towards densification, they're going to allow a complete rezoning from a single residential to a five-story development. And it is absolutely frightening. You know, I understand that where the property already has the zoning, then it's fine. You know, densification is done. We went through that whole process in 2013 with the new zoning scheme. But now the city are allowing rezoning. And that's where I really, really take exception. So it's it's heritage, just to answer your question, it's heritage, then planning, and then the actual application. And I'll keep quiet now. Debbie, that's really, that's, uh, that's very, very useful. And I think certainly from an urban design perspective, uh, I agree with you. I think what is zoned now is, is, is what it is. Um, but I certainly would like to encourage Mikhail to, um, to push push back on some of those things that are not zoned uh, where people are taking chances with, with sort of where it all unravels. Mikhail, do you want to respond to that? Um, uh, no, it's actually just a, a question um, or request. Uh, perhaps, Debbie, if, if you do have the, the zoning scheme for Ward 59, I don't have it uh, because i am like been doing this for like a month. Um, I'd love to see it. Um, because that really does uh, that really does empower me to be able to you know object on on fairly strong grounds and I agree with you we can't just be changing the way we plan our city you know uh, every six months you actually need to have some kind of vision for what you want it to look like and why um, and if we made a mistake in 2013 then you made a mistake in 2013 you know and we've got to wait for the next cycle um, yeah, I'll share the link with everyone now, Mikhail, but I'll share it with you by email as well. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, Debbie. Yeah, Mikhail, we could. Uh, if I, I mean, it might be a it might be a helpful session if if uh, some folks attending would like to do uh, a, the the application is called City Viewer. You can just uh, look at your property. You can see what what applies. It's a really helpful um, online tool, um, so you can feel empowered. I think. I think. Feeling like you have decisions and legislation on your side, as opposed to being at the whim of somebody making decisions, I think is is it's all there. Thanks, thank you, Paul. Is uh, yeah, that's brilliant. So the the links are in the chat box for anyone who's interested. It's relatively easy to uh, navigate, but by all means, give us a call if you get stuck. Okay, um, let's see if we can do one or two more questions before we go to next step. Um, Okay, there was one of two questions about just communicating this more broadly to the entire ward. Um, Mikhail, I'm hoping we can get into the community newspapers for another new cycle uh, before the 7th of January, but maybe that's something we can chat about um, offline. Um, but the more people who contribute, the better, I would say. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, so I'm going to be putting out a... Um request or an invite an invite uh, to every WhatsApp group um, and perhaps on email as well and on social media as well, uh, inviting people to join the ward mailing list. Uh, but all I will request, all I'll ask for is your name, surname, and your email address. I won't ask for any more information. 
um, and in there we'll you know I'll kind of share stuff about uh, this process as well as um, um, how to continue to participate further. Fantastic. Okay, so on that, um, if you do have uh, any more comments or questions, please continue to put them into the chat bar. There seems to be a couple of comments around what the best communication tool is for you to hear from the counselor. And I think that's probably gold. So if you have a, a, a preferred way to hear about things like this, you can just also go ahead and put those in the chat bar. I think we'll learn a lot. So thank you for from John and Jill already for kicking kicking that off. Um, so while you while you type your your preferred communication method in the the chat bar, um, what I do want to alert you to is that hopefully um, we will be doing a second phase of uh, participation and really sort of pulling apart and critiquing what the IDP sort of shapes up to be by the March um, public comment period. So please join us for that and please sort of think think about March with that in mind um, and, and sort of bring your best, your best tools and your best solutions um, to that. We'll have a longer runway to prepare um, just in terms of us as facilitators um, and well done to everyone for, for kind of pulling this off within a sort of a week a week notice period of of just um, getting together and giving your comments. Um, so that's something to to look forward to. And then the other thing that we're collating is the map, where if you were on the at any of the neighborhood sessions, you gave us spatial locations um, for concerns and observations, and we are digitizing those points. And so hopefully um, we'll leave councillor. Uh, manual with a a navig navigable map where, where he can discuss and comment and uh, map issues in the future as well because we really believe that looking at things spatially kind of opens up all kinds of solutions. Um, so that's what you can look forward to in the future. Um, my email address is in the chat bar and Mikhail's going to pop his email address in the chat bar now as well. Um, and if you have any questions you are welcome to Oh, there it is. It's ready. Roland just says nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Roland. Um, if you have any questions or comments, either about the process or about the detail of what we've shared, um, you're welcome to reach out to, to either of us, um, preferably uh, Mikhail for, for content related questions, because I really i am excited about his um, uh, ability, capacity and mandate to run with those things. I'm just going to be like his emotional support animal. Um, so please can I ask you to, to reach out if you have any questions, if you need some help with um, with your participation or with your comments. Um, I'm very happy to help you and walk you through that if you, if you need help. Now the question is, how are you going to get this wonderful document of comments in your hand? Now, you should have opened up this meeting email, this meeting invite, this meeting link. Let me try that again. You should have opened this meeting link from an email. I'm going to be sending this document out to that RSVP list. So if for any reason you feel that I don't have your email address or you have never received an email from me that you are sitting in this room, please can I ask you to take the last two or three minutes of this session to send me a direct message with your email address. I'm going to be emailing everyone the, the collated comment document. And the reason I'm doing that is so that you can slice it up and, and change it and, and do whatever you need with it to make it yours rather than us putting it in a shared drive, which gets a little complex. Um, so I'm going to be emailing that out. If I don't have your email, please can you put that in the chat bar or you can just email me and give me your details. So I just want to make sure that everyone uh, feels that I can contact them and that they will receive that in the inbox. Um, and that is it. And I will leave you with a document with the encouragement to change your city by uh, using this opportunity and thanking the councillor for being uh, so innovative in, in doing this um, facilitation process with us. So as a wrap up, Michael, I'm going to hand the mic to you to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, and I'm done. If there are any other burning questions, please pop them in the bar, but I think Mikhail's gonna send us off on our merry way. Mikhail? Uh, yeah, great, thank you, Kirsten. Um, I think the only way that I want to end uh, is to say that I actually want to make um, 
not necessarily Zoom, but certainly kind of a back and forth solution making uh, uh, engagement with residents, quite a regular occurrence uh, on our calendar. Um, our ward assistants are starting tomorrow. They were confirmed tomorrow. Uh, the, sorry, they signed the contract today for tomorrow. Um, and uh, I've already sat down with her and, and set some dates uh, for, I think, like the first few weeks of January. Um, so, so I certainly uh, want to kind of keep it being quite uh, participatory, uh, quite collaborative, um, and uh, also to be able to continue to feedback whenever there are issues, um, uh, and especially whenever opportunities for public input uh, in the formal process are actually opened up, because because often you know you'll see that that people are a bit annoyed when something happens and they didn't realize that they had the opportunity two years before, for example. Um, so I think it's really important to 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 get that right. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for participating. Uh, the documents will come your way. Um, you'll get an opportunity to join the mailing list uh, in, uh, in I suppose tomorrow morning actually, um, uh, and go forth and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening. Cheers, cheers. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, team. Well done. Thanks. I, I Thanks was about to say classic, classic Jill for staying and not leaving. Oh, no, no. I sent it to the waiting room. Oh, good. <laughs> That's a cool uh, room Roland. technique. Thank you, Roland. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm fabulous. Hello. Yeah, good, good. I'm sorry for skipping country. Um, I'm good. Um, but, um, can you... Oh, do you want to press stop on record? Sorry. Let's do that quickly. Sure.